Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is the next quiz we are going to have on this channel. This is quiz number three and the topic for the quiz is Robotics Enterprise Framework or the RE Framework. When I posted the quiz number one and two, I have received multiple requests that I should conduct a quiz on the RE Framework. So here it is. We have also covered quizzes on the basics of UiPath and the basics of Orchestrator. In case you haven't already watched them, I would like you to go and watch them. I'll put the links in the description and you can refer that. Okay, so now let's get started with quiz number three that is on RE Framework. So what exactly is going to happen in this quiz? There would be total 15 questions and the topic would be Robotics Enterprise Framework. You would get 15 seconds to answer each question. So whenever the question is displayed on the screen, you will see a timer, which is the line which you can see at the bottom. This is a 15 second timer, which you will get to answer the question correctly. At the end of the 15 seconds, the correct answer will be displayed on the screen. So as an audience, the expectation would be you can just comment the answers in the comment box or at the end, you can also comment your total score. In case you have some other queries, some other concern regarding to the quiz, you can always drop me a note on the email ID or on the comments and I shall get back to you. Hoping that the concept of quiz is clear. Let's get started. All the best guys. Coming up next is the question number one for the quiz. And here is the question number one. RE framework is built on the concept of. So how exactly is RE framework built on what concepts it is built upon? So is it the flow chart? It is the G handler. Is it the sequence or is it the state machines? So I hope you know the answer and the timer has started. In case you are aware of the answer, you are feel free to feel free to write the answer in the comment box or you can just keep your totaling your score at the end comment your score. So the correct answer is answer number D that is state machine. Okay, so RE framework is entirely built on the concept of state machines. Next question is, what are the benefits of using RE framework? So we all know that UiPath has provided us with this framework, which is called the robotic centerwise framework. Now, when we talk about benefits, what are the benefits? Is it the exceptional handling? Is it the reusability? Is it the extensibility or all of the above? So the timer has started. What are the benefits of using RE framework? Option A, option B, option C, or option number D, which says all of the above. And the correct answer is option number D, that is all of the above. That means we have exceptional handling, reusability, extensibility, and many other features which are provided by UiPath. Okay, so I hope you are getting the answers correct. So the next question is how many states we have in the default RE framework. So we have a framework which is provided by UiPath. How many states I get when I create the RE framework first time. You always can add or remove states, but what is the default number of states in RE framework? And the correct answer is four. So we totally have four states. Uh, the first one is the init, get transaction, process transaction and the end process. As a developer, you always has an option to add or remove the state. But by default, we have the four states in RE framework. Okay, so I hope you are enjoying the quiz. Coming up next is the question number four. That how exactly is the configuration file in RE framework? Is it a list of string? Is it a list of object? Is it a dictionary of string or object or is it a collection of string or string? So when by default, RE framework has something which is called a config file. When you read the config file, what is the object? A, B, C or D. Okay, so the timer has started. Let us see if you guessed it correct. So the question is how exactly is the configuration file available in RE framework? When you read it, what format you get? And the correct answer is option number C, that is a dictionary of string and object. 
so configuration file is stored as an excel in the data folder of re framework when you read that excel you get the data table and then in the re framework we convert the data table one by one we add this data and we prepare a dictionary which is a dictionary of string and object so i hope you got this answer correct coming up next is question number five in which state the config file is loaded in question number four i told that there is a config file which is being used now in which state of re framework we load this configuration file is it the process transaction is it the initialization is it the get transaction or the load configuration so let us see the timer has started in which state of re framework we load the config file that is in which state we create that dictionary of string and object a b c or d and the correct answer is the initialization state this is sometime also called the init state so this is the place where you will first time read the config file and get the dictionary okay so coming next is question number six state executed in case of system exception in initialization okay so till now we have seen that we have four states in it get transaction process transaction and end process now the question is what happens if i get a system exception in initialization where exactly will re framework go will it go to end process will it go to init all settings will it go to get transaction data or will it go to process transaction okay so the timer has started the question is where exactly the re framework will go if we get a system exception in initialization and the correct answer for question number six is option a that is end process which simply means that whenever you are getting any exception in the initialization state the re framework will go to end the process it will not go to any other state because you are not able to initialize the things properly right so that is where in case of a system exception in initialization it goes to end process okay so moving ahead with question number seven next state executed when a transaction is successful so this question means so let's say you have added 10 transaction 100 transaction to a queue or anywhere right to a queue queue a data table list of items now if a transaction is successful which is the next step which is executed by the re framework is it the end process is it the get transaction is it the initialization or is it the process transaction so you have five transaction let's say three transactions are successful now what is the next step when a transaction is successful right so the timer has started let us see what is the correct answer what is the next step executed in case a transaction is successful so in case a transaction is successful the next state executed is get transaction data now why exactly get transaction data because if a transaction is successful ui path will move back to get transaction data where it will see whether i have a new transaction to process or not if there are no more transaction it will go to end process if there is a new transaction it will again process that transaction so to answer the question correctly whenever there is a transaction which is successful the next stage executed is the get transaction data okay so I hope you are getting the answer correct and you are writing down your scores also now the question number eight which exceptions are retried in re framework okay so re framework has by default mechanism where it retries the exception so there is a transaction which has failed now it can fail because of any exception let's say selector exception system exception business exception now the question is which type of exception are by default retried in re framework so are system exception retried business exceptions are retried selector not found exception are retried or question number option four that all exceptions are retried okay 
so let us see the correct answer that which kind of exceptions are retried in re framework by default so it's option a b c or all the exceptions are retried so the correct answer is system exception whenever there is a system exception in a transaction that transaction is retried in re framework okay so moving next okay before moving to question number nine i just want to highlight that there is a dedicated playlist on the channel which is made on the re framework you can find the link in the bio there i am explaining the re framework from the basics like what is dispatcher performer we are exploring each and every state in details and we are talking re framework from beginning so i'll put the links of this playlist in the descriptions and you can refer that okay now next is question number nine logout close application should be in which default xaml this question means i am writing an automation i have to log out from an application i have to close the applications so by default re framework has some xamls which are provided so ideally where exactly should i write code to log out or closed any of the application which my automation is doing should i write the code in kill all process should i write the code in logout application should i write the code in init all application or should i write the code in close all application you just have to tell me which is the xaml where we write the code to log out and close the applications okay so the timer has started i have to log out from some application i am using an application i have to close the application which are used in automation now which xaml i will use in re framework to write this code and the correct answer is close all application start xaml so this is the xaml which is by default provided by uipath you have to just go and plug your code to log out and close the use application in this XAML. We have uh, option number B, which is logout application. There is no default XAML which says logout applications, right? You always has an option to create one separate XAML of logout application, but by default, RE framework has something which is called close all applications start XAML. And this is the place where you should write all your code to log out or close the applications okay so i hope you are getting the answers correct and noting down your scores as well now question number 10 is max retry default value in the config file so in case we are not using the orchestrator queues re framework can be used with different kind of data it can be queue it can be a data table it can be list of mail messages any list of items so there is a property which is called max retry number in the configuration file that is available in the data folder. Now the question is what is the max retry number default value in the config file? Is it 0? Is it 1? Is it 3? Or is it blank? So max retry number default value in the config file. And the correct answer is 0 so max retry number default value available in the config file is zero as a developer you always has an option to go and change this number from zero to any other number but by default value is zero okay so coming next is question number 11 set transaction status dot xaml is invoked in which state okay interesting one I have a XAML which is available in the RE framework. The XAML is set transaction status. The job of this XAML is to set the transaction status as the name suggests it, whether it is success, whether it is failed or anything, right? Transaction status we have to set. Now, where exactly this XAML is invoked? Which state? So we have four state, right? Init, get transaction, process and end process. So where exactly by default set transaction status dot XAML is invoked? Option A process, B get transaction, C end process or initialization. So let's see what's the correct answer. And the correct answer is in the process dot XAML. 
so set transaction status dot xaml is invoked in the finally block of the process transaction state right so there is a xaml which is called process dot xaml process dot xaml is in try in the catch we have the exceptional handling for the process dot xaml and then there is something which is called the finally block in the finally block of process dot xaml we invoke the set transaction status dot xaml so the correct answer is option number a okay so coming up next is question number 12 what happens if we click stop while the transaction is executing okay so let's say our transaction is already in process and the robot is processing now i go to orchestrator and i simply click on the stop button now what would happen right so our transaction was executing there let's say there were 10 transaction and transaction number 5 was executing it is in middle of execution now I go to orchestrator and I click on the stop button now what will happen option a the process will be terminated option number B the current transaction will complete option number C it will jump to the next transaction that is transaction number six or option number D robot will stop the execution okay so I hope the question is clear let me repeat there is a transaction which is already being executed in the performer or anywhere and you just click on the stop button from the orchestrator now as soon as you click on the stop button what will happen the process is terminated the current transaction will get complete it will jump to the next transaction or the robot will stop the execution let us see the correct answer is it a b c or d i hope you guys have guessed the answer correctly that what happens if i click the stop button while the transaction is executing okay and the correct answer is option number b the current transaction will complete now why this will happen because we have an activity which is called should stop activity in the get transaction data so whenever you click on the stop button from orchestrator and if you are using the default RE framework the current transaction will get completed and when the robot goes to fetch the next transaction that time it will check I have received the stop signal from orchestrator so I won't jump to the next transaction so the correct answer is whenever you click on the stop button from orchestrator it will first complete the current transaction execution and then the process will get stopped it will no longer go to the next transaction but for this you should have the should stop activity available in the process and if you are using the RE framework that is by default available in the get transaction data okay so i hope you got this answer correct we still have three more questions left now question number 13 is default transaction item in re framework so what is this question we have something which is called transaction item which is getting repeated now whenever you create a re framework as a developer you always can change the transaction item transaction data but the question is what is the default item in re framework string is it data row is it object or is it the queue item so default transaction item in re framework is a b c or d and the correct answer is q item okay so what is this by default re framework is coded to work with orchestrator queues where you get all the items from the queue so that becomes your transaction data and now from the transaction data you are iterating one item one by one so that's why the default transaction item in re framework is nothing but a queue item you always can change if your transaction data is a data table then your transaction item will become a data row and similarly you can have other data types also but the default transaction item is always the queue item okay so second last question for the quiz question number 14 coming on the screen which of the below is by default available in re framework okay so i have named some of the xamls you have to tell me which of this xaml is by default available i don't have to create one right is it the take screenshot.xaml 
is it the read asset retry transaction or none of the above is available okay so i hope the question is clear which of the below is by default available in re framework and the timer has started so re framework always give me some default uh, xamls you have to tell me which is the xaml which is by default available is it a b c or option number d and the correct answer is take screenshot dot xaml okay so this is in xaml which is already provided by re framework in case of exception the re framework will take a screenshot of the current screen and it will store it at the location which you have provided in the config file so this xaml is reusable you can just drag and drop it anywhere as per your need or as per your program or as per your automation but by default this is available we just take the screenshot in case of an exception and it will store the exception in a path which you have again specified in the config file so the correct answer for question number 14 is option number a okay so let me go to the last question of the quiz guys i hope you are following up with me and you are getting the answers correct and noting your scores as well okay so the last question for the quiz is the required email to start the automation is not available okay so uh, there is an automation i'll just explain this question there is an automation which requires an email to start so whenever the email is available then only you have to start the automation now your robot is trigger and the robot find that the email to start the automation is not available now what what kind of exception is this the email to start the automation is not available now what kind of exception is this is it a system exception is it a application exception is it a business exception or none of the above okay so before starting the timer if you are with me in case you like this video please give me a thumbs up if you find this video insightful and helpful drop me a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel okay so the required email to start the automation if the email is not available is what kind of exception and the correct answer is the business exception because now why business exception i have to start a process based on the email which i receive from the business right so in case the email is not received the robot cannot proceed with the process so i was expecting an email from the business and business has not sent the email so that is why this scenario is categorized as a business exception now if there is something let's say you have to open an application and when the robot was attempting to open the application if the application is not opening then it categorizes to application exception now based on the scenario you always has an option to select the correct type of exception and you can categorize it but this one if the required email to start the automation is not available so that exception categorizes to the business exception okay so that brings us to end of this quiz thank you for watching if you are with me so you have got a number you can always comment your score in the comment box and let me know how do you find the quiz and what is the next topic you want me to create the quiz on so i'll wrap this video here thank you for watching if you like this video please do subscribe to the channel and happy automation Thank you.